Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name's Ian, and I'm back again for another product review. I like to review products honestly and tell you how I experience them when I receive them. These product reviews are genuine as I actually own these equipment, this pieces of equipment and I've actually used them. And so uh, today we're going to be talking about the Baofeng uh, or Bofeng or Baofeng. There's a lot of different ways to pronounce it. Uh, but anyway, it's the cheap, inexpensive radio uh, that most of you are familiar with out there. This, um, uh, these radios are pretty inexpensive. Uh, here's the UV5R in red. Uh, here's the UV82 in red. Uh, and uh, they these radios basically have the same interior they're just a different exterior and uh, we're going to talk today specifically about the UV82 now I prefer the UV82 uh, over the uh, UV5R and the reason is because it's more rugged uh, the, the casing on it is more of a Motorola style uh, casing uh, and it seems to be a little more weather resistant uh, the traditional UV5R uh, seems to not be that water resistant. In fact, this one's gotten wet and I've had to take it apart and dry it out uh, and clean it off in there. Uh, and it still works. But uh, the point is, is uh, it gets wet inside pretty easy. The UV5R, although not waterproof, it does take a little more. This one's built a little more for, uh, I think, for outdoor use. Uh, and uh, it's great. Uh, they, they, this uh the, the the wonderful thing i like there's several things i really like about the uv82 uh and uh some of those uh, make it uh, better than the uv5r uh it is a dual band it works on vhf and uhf it it has a very wide bandwidth that can be used in in uh for public safety use uh for people that are licensed there uh it it can be programmed for gmrs channels uh it would not be legal to use it for frs but i'll leave that there it can still be programmed for it uh and uh it can also be used for marine there's a lot of different bands uh, you would need to check and make sure that you're legal to use it on those bands because, of course, any use of radio requires some kind of licensing uh, with a few exceptions like CB and things like that. Basically, the UV5R and the UV82 are the same radio except there's a few really cool features. And we'll start with those. Uh, this particular one here, the UV5R, I got in red. You can get them in a lot of different colors, green, blue, yellow. Uh, I've even seen them in white. Uh, and of course the most common color is black. The reason this looks like this is because I've had this radio for three years now and the red battery has already gone bad and I've replaced it with a replacement battery. Buying colored replacement batteries is very expensive. It's much better just to go buy you a black replacement battery for 10 bucks and be done with it. The UV5R, just like the UV82, or um, I'm sorry, the UV82 allows you to put on extended batteries. I have two. I was looking for them. I couldn't find them before the broadcast, but they actually protrude down beyond uh, the, uh, the radio, which is really cool because what it does is uh, it allows you to expand the capacity of the battery by two or three times uh, the internal size because it's actually comes down below the radio and takes up the entire space of the radio down about another inch and a half. Uh, the UV82, the other thing I like about it, notice there's two transmit buttons. Not many radios do this. A lot of radios have dual receive and then you can pick which one you want to talk on. This one has dual transmit and dual receive. Now, I, I believe you can only transmit on one at a time. But when you're talking on this thing, you can literally talk to your friends on channel one and your friends on channel two just like that by just using the two different transmit buttons. Uh, the VFO does allow you uh, to program in the channels ahead of time and then put channel one on the top, channel two on the bottom, and then these transmit buttons work for that. It's a great radio. I've had this one three years. It works fine still. Uh, I still use it. Uh, I am going to be uh, reviewing some other radios that I use more often now because I've bought some other radios. But I do want to kind of address for a moment uh, the misnomer that Chinese radios are automatically garbage. They're not, actually. Um, there's a lot of arguments out there about spurless transmissions, but I, I can't find many people that are willing to come on and say, hey, I you know here I can prove that this is putting out spurless transmissions. Uh, the truth is, is uh, a lot of your your older hams 
built their own equipment or spent a lot of money for their own equipment. And uh, they see us coming in now and grabbing these radios for 35 bucks. This radio is is sold as a 5-watt radio. It puts out about 4.5 watts. Um, that's not bad. Um, now, I'm sure if I bought a Yazoo or Yazoo radio for, let's say, $125, a very nice radio, and it says it's 5 watts, it would probably put out exactly 5 watts. Is it that big a deal? No. And I'll tell you, as time has gone on over the last three years, the newer Chinese radios I've been buying, the... Uh, the wattage has been right on par with what they're advertising. I don't know if there's been some pushback, but the ones from three or four years ago, eh, it's a watt or two off. It's not quite putting out the power that you thought it would. Um, the newer ones, yeah, closer to it. As a matter of fact, Baofeng's come out with a new UV25R, and uh, I can't wait to get my hands on one of these. It's about 55 bucks. It's a commercial version of the UV5R and it's got a huge color screen and a big speaker. It's a brick and it's got a USB charging. It lasts for days on the battery. I cannot wait to get a hold of one of these. So now I'll be reviewing that as soon as I do. But anyway, to finish up with this, uh, with this UV82, you also have um, the squelch function, the monitor function basically. And it also has the light, which is nice. Gives you a flashlight or a blinking light if you need an emergency light. Uh, it also picks up FM band, commercial radio or terrestrial radio, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so you can put in your favorite station, 92.5 or 105.3 or whatever, and pick up your commercial music or talk radio stations. That comes in handy um, I, when uh, Hurricane Ian hit here and Hurricane Irma. Um, one of the things I did was had one of my uh, UV-82s uh, clipped uh, clipped up in the kitchen and it was basically just playing the weather radio and it played it It must have played it for 10 hours before it went dead um, It's uh, it's a great thing to have the weather radio is programmed in here the FM radio is already in here uh, So there's a lot of really cool things you can program in here as far as programming uh, You buy the programming cable it programs through chirp. I will tell you this. I'll give you this warning don't ever load any software off of a disc that comes with a radio from the country of China. Uh, this is just a word to the wise. You don't need to. Okay, All the stuff you need is online, and you can get it from somewhere uh, that is reputable. You do not need the Baofeng program to use the Baofeng uh, to program it. Use Chirp, C-H-I-R-P. Just put it right into your browser, Chirp, uh, uh, and input uh, programming radios. It'll come right up. With that, you can buy the $10 cable, which is uh, basically the same port. Uh, the cable takes the same port that the headphone takes, uh, and that goes right in there like that. And the charger does this, uh, not the charger, but the programmer does the same thing. Goes, it programs it with sound. And basically, um, your computer plugs in, you go to Chirp, you can download everything. When you get in a Chirp, look around a little bit watch a video on it because you can save yourself a lot of time on chirp by learning how to download sets of frequencies you can download sets of frequencies for different things like let's say you want marine band in here let's say you do a lot of boating and you're licensed or, or you're able to use those bands you can actually download and blow right into the radio on certain channels. You pick the channel numbers. You can download the entire marine band in here. Uh, uh, it, and it's all in VHF. This thing actually works VHF FM, so it all works. Um, you can download a lot of different things. You can even download the list of repeaters for your town and install them right into your radio uh, without you having to sit there and fill out a frequency spreadsheet. Uh, in order to program it. So programming these things have become very easy. Uh, one of the big complaints with these is they're impossible to program in the field. Yes. I'll just be honest with you right up front. They suck to program in the field. Uh, programming it from the front face, I don't think I've ever successfully done it. But the key is being prepared. I have a laptop and a set of cables that are already in my back. When I take my laptop somewhere, I've got three programming cables in there and one's a universal that has about five ends on it and I can program just about any radio I run across 
uh, especially these cheaper Chinese radios. And um, uh, I'm able to just blow the radio, and I program radios for anybody that needs me to. Um, it's uh, I, I hate to see someone not enjoy a radio because they weren't able to get it programmed or whatever. And I find that Chirp works very, very well. Some people say you shouldn't use Chirp with your more expensive uh, Japanese-made radios. I've also heard that's been debunked. So I don't know. You may want to still check on it. If you got a Yazoo or an Icom, both great makers of radios, if you have one of those, you may want to just go online and do some research before you plug in Chirp and start programming. And finally, the radio has something that I think is great on it, and that's a removable antenna. That's what makes it illegal to use it as an FRS radio. Um, with this, you can buy an adapter. And this adapter right here, I can hook it right into the radio in the top here where the antenna goes. And now I can take this, and I can take my coax from outside and hook it right up to there. And now... This 5-watt radio is talking to the repeater 15 miles down the road from inside the house, and it's crystal clear because you've bought this little piece of equipment. This this right here, I think you can get a pair of them for about 8 bucks uh, on uh, Amazon, uh, maybe even a little cheaper on eBay, um, and it uh, works really good. And then you can literally buy a $25 magnet mount 2-meter antenna like you'd put on your car and then just go out and stick it on your metal roof. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do. There is many, many, many antenna options for $5, $50, $100, whatever you want to spend that would make this radio a very good option. Now think about this. Let's say you don't have a lot of money right now. Or let's say you're just getting into it. Or let's say you don't have your amateur license and you just want to listen. You just want to use the radio. You put this adapter on and you hook up your antenna and you hook up your mic like this and you leave it sitting in the charger and you've got your base radio i mean it it works i i did this i did this for a while i i would leave this in my house uh in the charger i i didn't leave it in the charger all the time but when i was using it i would leave it in the charger and then i would participate in radio nets on my little five watt bow thing but i was using I had bought an $80 antenna and eventually built my own Yagi antenna. I built a seven element Yagi antenna out of some pieces of aluminum and a PVC pipe. And I stuck it up at 25 feet and I was talking to the next county over with a Baofeng radio. So these radios are really cool. You can learn how to build those antennas and everything right here on this YouTube channel. Uh, we've got all that stuff from a few years ago when we were doing technical nets and we go through the entire process of building those antennas and working with all this radio equipment. So anyway, my recommendation is the UV5R is a wonderful radio. It's a little old technology now. There's some newer stuff coming out. Um, but as far as a small rugged radio, I think if I had to just pick uh, pick one to just go in my go box, to just stick in the bottom of the bag so I had a spare radio with me, uh, the, UV, the UV82 would be what I would choose um, because of its, its rugged and it does everything uh, that a radio needs to do, basically. And I'd have it fully programmed. I'd have every channel in here programmed with all the different frequencies that you think you might need. And, uh, and then... The other thing you might want to have is in your phone, or maybe even a better idea, on a piece of paper, you can print out that frequency list, so that way you know what's in your radio when, you, when there's an emergency or you want to go back and try to find something. All right, I'm going to let you go. That's the UV-5R from Baofeng in China. Not as bad as everybody says it is. Actually, it's a pretty good radio, and um, the, the sound quality is clear. And uh, they seem to work really good. And most of the negative things you hear about Baofeng are just people that don't like cheap Chinese radios. Okay, I don't get into the politics. I don't get into the, the, the global mess or this and that or who made what. I'm just telling you what my opinion is of this radio. It's great. I love it. And for 30 bucks, I mean, you can get these as cheap as 25 or 30 bucks. You can buy all kinds of accessories. This one, for instance, has the long antenna on it. I will tell you that when it comes to the rubber ducky antennas, you'll never get better performance than the one that was designed with the radio. 
this is a little piece of wisdom that no one's told me. It's something I've figured out along the way. I did some testing with these longer antennas. And I figured, look, this, this antenna's got to be better for two meters, right? Look, it's a lot longer. It's, it's a lot closer to a half wave, right? And I'm thinking that, that's got to be a lot better than this when it comes to, to distance and all that. I tested these exact two antennas right here, and they have the same performance on this radio. Why? Because this antenna was built for this radio. It's designed to work with the frame in this radio as the ground. It's designed to have the harmonic perfectly with this radio. And when you put an aftermarket antenna on there, sometimes you will improve your performance. Other times you will not. It's not going to be as big of improvement as you think going to this long antenna. And this is a real pain in the ass to carry around all day when, you're, when you clip it on your belt. So... I wouldn't, these are Brie, and there's different ones that make these antennas. There's a lot of, of uh, uh, be careful if you're buying it off eBay uh, in different places. Uh, a Brie, and uh, what's the other company? There's two companies. There's a lot of knockoffs right now. They say they're a Brie. You can buy them for five or seven bucks, and you get the thing in and throw it on your SWR meter, and literally it's garbage. It's just something made to look like an antenna. So be careful with that. If you're going to buy one, Make sure you get it off Amazon or get it from somewhere you can trust. There is a lot of counterfeit Abri antennas out there. I, I know that sounds crazy, but they literally just make a knockoff that's made with really cheap material and then just sell it. with. And it's got the name on it and everything. It's crazy. I ended up with one of them, and it had about a third of the performance of my other antennas, and I literally took it all apart and looked at it, and it was just really cheap. So you got to watch that. Another thing. These radios, you can get battery eliminators for them. This one's actually for a different radio, but these work great. You can use the battery eliminator, but you do have to be careful with these because they melt. If they get, uh, if you use the radio for a long time, hooked up to one of these in a hot car, uh, you could get some melting. So you got to watch out for that. But this works very well. One last thing about the UV82 or any cheap radio that you buy. You get what you pay for on this kind of stuff. See these two mics? This one costs $6. This one costs $20. The difference is, is this one is complete garbage. It is just crap. If you're going to buy a Palm mic, start at the $20 range and get one from B-Tech or get one that looks like a real, like one the cops would have. Don't buy one of these little cheapy ones from Baofeng, okay? This one's from B-Tech. It's probably made by Baofeng, but it's a much better quality mic. So just, again, on the mics, don't go, don't go 6 or 8. Go 20 or 25. Get you a decent mic because the mic is your mic and your speaker. And so if you plug in that speaker mic to a radio and it's a cheap speaker mic, everything you hear is going to sound like mud. And, uh, and you don't want that. So anyway, that's it. That's the UV82. Uh, I recommend it. Uh, with one caveat, and that would be, uh, I would look at the newer stuff Baofeng's come out with, okay? Uh, there is, uh, I, I believe it's the, the UV 25, uh, 25R or something like that. That radio looks really good, and it's 10 watts. And guess what? They've tested it. It puts out 10.1 watts on VHF and 10 watts on 70 centimeters. Is that crazy? And so, yeah, that's, uh, that's a great radio, and I can't wait to get my hands on one of those. And, of course, as soon as I do, I'll be reviewing it here. But anyway, that's my complete review and maybe a slight tutorial on the use of the UV82. And I hope you guys enjoy your inexpensive radios. There's nothing wrong with buying an inexpensive radio and enjoying radio until you can buy something or until you decide you want something a little more expensive. It's a lot easier to convince the wife to buy you a $35 radio anyway. All right, guys, have a good one out there. My name's Ian. This is Starship Adventures, back with another product review. You guys enjoy Radio World out there because it's a fun time.